Hey everybody, this is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. How are you guys doing today? Today I've got a video on my new T Formation uh, Selected Youth Football Plays ebook by Coach Parker. Uh, it's called The Tiger T. Uh, spent the last two months, uh, three months researching the T Formation after I put out the Wing T book and uh, learned a ton of football. Uh, and learned that the T formation was actually uh, one of the first formations in football way before the single wing and double wing. So that's pretty cool. And uh, just learned a lot and uh, really enjoyed writing this book. And uh, it's about 390 pages, uh, 15 different T formation series, uh, a new beast T called Toro formation that I'm coming up with some plays to update and I introduce that here. So uh, stay tuned. A lot of good stuff as we'll do a uh, quick walkthrough on the T formation book. Uh, and before we get too far into it, uh, please subscribe to the channel. If you get a ch chance, hit the subscribe like button. Uh, and if you're on the podcast, do whatever you need to do to, to subscribe. That would be awesome. But uh, let's jump into the book. Uh, and once again, this is Coach Parker with CoachParker.com org your host uh so let's get started so like i said this is the t formation book uh just put it out uh if you pay close enough attention on the side you can see a lot of the plays uh, if you want to slow down but hopefully you'll support me and purchase the book it is $14.99 and there's coupons out there all over the place to take a few dollars off so uh, it's got over 200 play play diagrams in T, so there's something for everyone in here. So I think $14.99 is a steal. The purpose of the book, basically develop more T formation plays for youth football, and specifically so those plays will fit into my uh, Power Wing Beast offense and Wildcat multi-spread plays offensive uh, playbooks. Those are the my two big playbooks that I use quite a bit, and all of these selected youth football plays or kind of addendums into that uh, series there and all the wording and everything will fit into that so if you want to add one of these different books or like you know some t formation plays from this book you can and it won't really disrupt your uh, terminology if you've already been using uh, my stuff before some of these plays i've run a long time ago i had a coach that liked the t formation so i've run it uh, one or two seasons with some plays. I've had it run against me quite a bit and seen that. And uh, after reading and doing a lot more research, I'm definitely adding uh, the Beast Toro uh, T plays into the Power Wing Beast offense eventually and uh, getting through that. So, uh, so yeah, and I think, like I said, there's a little bit of T formation plays for everybody. Here's the table of content, but I made it easy for you, you here on page 64. There's the base eight, sweet 16, and core 24 plays. That That's where you should start, really. Uh, the slide numbers are on there, and I'll show you how to look at that. But there's a lot of plays in the portfolio or library, what do you want to call it, T formation, because there's 15, 16 different series, uh, kind of like many little offenses. Um, and so it's just what, which one kind of fits your players. And uh, so take a look at that. But definitely start on base eight, sweet 16, core 24, and then, you know, use this like a Sears catalog. Here's my offensive format, uh, goals and stuff. I'm a ground and pound, defensive minded, ball control type of coach. And that's kind of those goals there. The T formation overview, just going into this real quick. Uh, Yale, just like the Yale single wing, uh, T formation came out of Yale University. It was called the regular formation, uh, tight T, straight T. There is so many names of different T stuff. 1888 was the first uh, formation of it. Uh, Harvard ran something too that was similar. The Bears, Chicago Bears and Stanford Bears actually kind of modernized it. Uh, and then uh, Don Ferro at Missouri kind of put uh, an option to it. So there's just a, a ton of stuff there. You can read the slide if you get the booker. Let's pause this and you can see all that. Uh, my take on it, I, I really learned a ton. Uh, I, I probably bought 15 to 20 books on the T formation. Somebody had put out there in one of the books that I read that, that there's really not a lot. There is a ton of information on the T formation. And for you, what I've done is 
summarized a lot of that stuff here. So you really have to go out and do the research, but uh, I really like it. And I, this probably should have been my first book. Uh, I wasn't enamored by the tea before, but now I am. You know, I've always been a big double wing guy and I kind of run the double wing sort of like a wing tea in a way. Uh, this has really added a new kind of series power kind of thing, especially with the beast those three backs it really just fits in and i don't know why i didn't click on that before but now i have uh, hopefully you'll see that in the book and how much i enjoyed it because uh there's a lot of good information here this is the name and variations i i came up with like 42 different variations of the t name that i found uh, they're all over the place everybody every coach kind of had his and developed his own play book around it move people around i'm sure there's more and i've probably got a few wrong because there's just so many of these things but you can kind of take a look and i've tried to summarize maybe the coach and what i thought it was and so forth so there's the many names and variations of the thing and and really the eye formation and the wishbone kind of came out of the came out of this here uh uh, as you can see, and definitely, uh, you know, the wing T and the double wing T, and then they kind of formalized into their modern era. Uh, strengths and weaknesses of the formation. Uh, Fritz Chrysler did a nice breakdown. I just pulled them there and added a couple, but uh, there it is. So here's the resources that I was going to talk about. There's a ton of resources. I mean, there's, I got 40 here, which includes Wikipedia, which is always a good first one. But uh, there's a ton of books that I've got here. Power T Football website, Dumb Coach was good, Jerry Campbell Football, those are some forums and websites, and then a couple of articles that came up. Of course, YouTube. There is a ton of information. Uh, a lot of this I added to my football library. I must have 200 uh, coaching books now of all the stuff. So you go. So you've got all the sources there. I highly recommend pretty much all of those books. I mean, I, I really enjoyed going through the T. So take a look at all that information. I'll be. Uh, I think you'll be glad you did. If you can find it, it's pretty tough. Sometimes you'll have to get uh, paper copies or stuff or try to find it on Scrib and things like that uh, and other sources. So, uh, and some of them are fairly pricey uh, now, just kind of FYI. So let's move on. T formation for this book, I've really tried to focus on what I call the full house straight T where I've got three backs in the backfield and I'm not really unless it's a pass in passing series, I'm not spreading it out or doing anything too fancy. There'll always be the three backs and quarterback uh, in the backfield. Now the quarterback and one of the backs may become a sniffer in the later series. And we'll talk about that when we get there, but pretty much full house, kind of a straight T kind of thing, tight T. I spread out the tight ends a little bit and uh, some other stuff in the split T, but I'm pretty much for youth football running it kind of in a tight T full house kind of configuration with uh, maybe the tackles and the uh, tight ends every now and a kind of a sloppy, nasty kind of larger gap space. So there's that. You can kind of see that. We'll get in that more. And then so I talk about the players in those respects, respects into kind of a full house D. I kept my numbering and verbiage the same, but the two tailback is actually a right halfback, but you'll see me talk about it as a tailback or a number two tail tailback. The same thing with the wing back. He's the left hand back. And you can call these right or left too when you get into the formation if you want your tailback running more. I did not do that here, but uh, show you. Uh, how to do that in later areas. Offensive linemen, really for the full house tees. We talk about those guys there. Then I've got a bunch of stuff on blocking. And of course you can go and get more on my blocking at uh, coachparker.org, looking at the Jaws blocking book. But this is mainly a play, a lot of plays and for you football. So if you want more blocking, go check out my Jaws blocking book. Uh, here's a quick deal about Woody Hayes on trapping. I uh, thought this was interesting. You know, uh, the trap play is really uh, dependent on the trapper, not really the running back. So if you can't, if you don't have a line that can trap really good, don't run a lot of traps because it doesn't really work. At least that's from his point of view. I feel the same with pulling people uh, in my rec league because I don't get a lot of good guards that can pull. I don't pull a lot. Some folks do, but I will overload more than pull. So there's that. 
Uh, there's a bunch of O-line tags that I use for everything and have. Those are in, this is all in the other books too. That's base information. Some of it, uh, like this intelligent gas blitz here, this is specifically, this is kind of new what I've put in. And this is kind of what uh, I call IQ splits and what the split T guys use about if there's somebody in your gap or not in your gap. So uh, you can read through that and talk about that. But basically you're gonna take them, especially at the ad hole, because we're, we're so tight. If I call a play at the hole, uh, we we may have that lineman uh, make a bigger split if there's nobody in his gap trying to move people out. And we may do that on the backside too. Older teams will definitely get into this. Younger teams, it's kind of harder. But older linemen can kind of get this IQ split thing where they're going to move wider or shorter based on a play call and where we're going with the hole. Some running back stuff, definitely make sure your running backs are faking and there's a bunch of calls and what they're going to do. And I show you all this stuff. Here's some motions and how I call sniffers and uh, they're basically at a gap or a person or a uh, whole number. Uh, and then there's a bunch of running back tags. I do diagrams on the, the opening for quarterbacks because there's a lot of different stuff and people call it differently. So I've got that outlined here. Uh, let's see the motions, all the motions you can do. Uh, the bear uh, motion T is a lot of motions. And then here's all these formations that you can use. I don't really go over a lot of those formations. I use more tags, but they're here for you to review. Here's the kind of uh, distances and widths and all that and lanes and things uh, for that T full house. Here's the series. So these are the base series. Uh, you got belly split T veer, buck sweep, lead ISO, power lead, double dives. I've got little nicknames that I call them here for my uh, wrist coach, like belly will be BLY probably and Veer, V E R. But, and I, so I, they don't really mean a whole lot like PLE. That means power lead, double dives is back inside out. Lead ISO kick out is lead ISO Lico. But uh, you may change those. I change a lot of stuff. So I don't get hung up on what I exactly call it. Uh, there's a man in motion. There's the fullback away stuff, quick pitch, sniff, lead sweet option. So you can see all that there. I'm trying to hurry through this so it's not like 30 minutes because I'm already at 15. Uh, this, here's a bunch of tags. I'm a tag guy. I'll probably leave everybody in the T formation and then I'll tag things like XYSE being split ends, uh, flanker, wide receiver, gun. I do more of that because I feel like I can make a lot of formation with these tags and then the kids don't think they're really remembering a new formation. Maybe it's easier for me too, I guess. I don't know. But uh, so here's the, here's page 64 where you're really supposed to start. And here's the base eight, sweet 16 and 24. And there's the slide number here. And you'll see a little star on each of the pages further back in the book. Uh, Cause there's so many pages. I didn't put each one of those there, but you can print those off and then, uh, individually and then kind of put them together but i you know that's where you should start i mean like i said there's like 230 or 40 plays but these are the 24 that are and actually i think it's 27 because there's nine on each of these deals that is going to really i think this is probably the stuff that i would run uh, this is more into to, to my thinking. Now, you can certainly adopt those. And the one thing that's great about buying my books is that I'm, I'm always available. If you guys have emailed me or messaged me on Facebook or Twitter, I get back to everybody fairly quickly. So if there's something that you're wanting to change and you're, you know, or come up with some other kind of base eight and switch 16 that fits your group, then, you know, we can talk about it and go through that and figure out what you got. I'm always willing to help with that. Okay. And so that was the, you should have got that long enough. They were sitting there. So here is uh, the belly series here and you can see all the plays over there. I'll just kind of shift through these and man, there's a ton and, uh, the belly series is kind of like that. I feel like it's more like the Bay City, Michigan T, Power T kind of thing. 
I feel I felt like they're running kind of the old belly kind of stuff. But that was me, maybe not. Uh, I don't know. The fullback is kind of diving in. Quarterback is sweeping. Uh, it's just to me an inside belly. Uh, they call it totally different, but uh, that's what I got from it. Uh, the Veer series uh, is like the like an outside belly, but they're going to quick open. And so the fullback, instead of hitting the AB gap, now he's going to hit CD. Uh, so here's the basically an out kind of an outside quick opening belly. It's called Veer. Uh, so you got that there. Uh, that inside belly, you can open it with, you can use it with a quick belly, a quick open belly. And I show you that on that thing there too. But here's all the beer. I mean, if you follow on the left there, you can see all those slides. I'm not going to quick open those. Uh, the Split T Series, uh, this is from uh, Don Ferro out of Missouri Tigers. It was funny. Uh, I, I named the T for Tiger, like, you know, Tony the Tiger kind of thing on Frosted Flakes. And then I get through this and I real then in the research, I find out that the Split T comes out of uh, University of Missouri Tigers, which was not already picked it. So that was great. Maybe it was kind of a foreshadowing of things to come. But uh, the Split T is all is really kind of like an offensive in itself. And it's kind of the the forerunner of the wishbone veer option kind of stuff. So um, I don't really run that for youth football. I did include it. I run the play, the individual plays, but don't let the quarterbacks option because uh, I ran option in high school as a fullback and I dealt with that backfield reps and all that. I think that's a lot for youth football and there's a lot of people agree with me on that. So, uh, but I think the plays and how you max out line splits and if you want to go into this counting system, now this counting system that I put here is really just a quickie. If you want more on that, you're really going to need to dive deeper into that. I'm just trying to give you a quick overview. If you think you like it, then I would suggest go get more. Uh, but here's uh, kind of the advanced uh, O-line max IQ stuff. And then here's the splits. You can see the splits are wide. Uh, I would not widen those at guards too much. You could probably get away that with that, especially with tight ends maybe a little bit bigger with tackles but they're really using that iq split thing going in and out so uh you guys can take a look at that uh, here is uh more plays here and like i said i don't use the option i'm just calling the play and we're blocking it based on that and the split t they don't really believe in trapping pulling and double teaming too much. They're doing what they call veer blocking or shield blocking and just running through the hole. So that's that. Uh, one of the big series that came out of wing T and I thought this worked really good for T and they have, they run some of that too. So uh, there's a lot of plays in this buck sweep series. And so uh, you'll see that I converted a lot of the wing T plays that I did for the other playbook into T stuff into power and uh, works out really good and I like it a lot actually. So there's a lot of those plays here and don't need to look. My son likes all of these boot options out of this <laughs> uh, uh, formation. I uh, ask him to look over stuff and like every play he starred were boot options and sweep options. And, and he played quarterback a lot of the time. He's more of a uh, managing quarterback versus a throwing quarterback, running quarterback. So. Uh, he uh, he liked a lot of the sweep option, boot option kind of stuff. Um, um, so there's that. Uh, the bio is the quick double dive, which is uh, I, some some authors said that that came out of Oklahoma, where they're diving both diving quick. So basically, I'm going to have one of the backs and full backs on the side. They're going to hit uh, an inside hole, then the other one will hit an outside hole, and then one guy will kind of sweep. And so you've got that where they're just both hitting holes. If the outside halfback run, it runs the fullback kind of goes out. It's kind of like a little cross buck there. So I kind of like that a lot actually. And then they've got some good power on a Q QB sweep and reverse and uh, 
this quick counter toss out of there i like that a lot too there as you can see that made the power lead series now this is a big series now i run this a lot out of uh, what i call pi a power eye formation that i run and it's very beasty uh also so you're gonna this is uh you'll see a lot of plays i love this i'm just two backs are going through one's kind of got an inside linebacker the other's got the outside or whatever you don't really need a lot of pulling. You can make an IQ gap for that and just go downhill. Youth football, younger ages, this is just great stuff. So you've got a lot of that there. Uh, it's just power. And this boot option again. This lead ISO is sort of just like that uh, that power, except the three, the three, one of the halfbacks will lead and then the fullback's going to kick out, which I use the fullback a ton to kick out the D end. And that's what this is. You got a D end kick out with the fullback and a lead by uh, one of the halfbacks. And so, uh, as you can see here, it gives it a little bit different action by the backfield, uh, but uh, works great. And again, you don't really need to pull a whole lot of kids with this because of that kick out by the fullback. I really like to use an overload and the fullback is kind of a, a kicker and trapper and you'll see that with the short t kind of stuff as we get there uh here's the motion so uh, my double wing called speed uh i had a lot of plays in here for that out of the double wing back a lot of these plays come from that so if you're wanting to run a t and you're running my speed and uh, from power wing beast office and wildcat this is going to be very close to those plays in that action that you're going to see so the, this would be a formation if you're already running that this is what i would probably implement be, uh, if i want a motion and this is coming out uh, this is kind of based off and kind of uh, from the uh Hallis shaughnessy uh uh, motion man in motion kind of playbook and you see this this three back he's going to do kind of a short motion he's going to kind of shuffle up half speed motion if he's getting the ball if they're not getting the ball they're running that deep motion a little bit faster across if you think that people are going to pick that up which they sort of do some of the better coaches do but most of them don't uh you can um you can just use one motion, but yeah, a lot of these uh, plays are going to be in, in Bear and Shaughnessy's and Hallis for the Chicago Bears. They'd put a flanker out there, so you'll see me do that with a wing every now and then in this one. Uh, and so yeah, so there's that uh, power lead there, boot. Okay, and then there's the DQ series. Uh, in the DQ series, I like this a lot. I actually flip the four with the two and call left or right. And I like the series. Basically, I got a quick hit by a full back down the middle and then the other two backs are leading on a sweep. And it's just a really quick kind of thing happening there. Not a whole lot of plays. Uh, the full back away series is you've got uh, basically another kind of lead for the full back and then the the other halfback is for a quick pitch. It's just kind of an opposite in a way of that last thing. And you've got that. This is if you've got a fullback that does know how to run pretty well, you've got some plays here. Uh, this is the, the series that my son really liked. And this is kind of really an outside belly series, uh, kind of sweep option thing. And a lot of pass plays out of this. Um, and uh, so you've got all these sweep option plays. Uh, my, Youngest son, who's now 20, he's not really young anymore. Uh, he loves this series here. Uh, and he was a double wing uh, uh, power eye kind of quarterback and back. Uh, and then here we get into the short T. Now the short T series is from Homer Rice. Uh, and it's so, I was so happy to find this book. Uh, and I think Coach Colinade uh, Kalinde I can't pronounce his name right. He's, he has a double wing site if you want to look him up over on Twitter and the web. Uh, and he actually runs a lot of the Beast and, and came up with some Beast plays way back in 2001. But uh, I think he recommended this book. And because he saw me moving what I call alpha beta adjustable blockers around. And he said I would really like this. And this is a great concept. And I, so I have kind of put it into... To my terminology and what I was using with alpha and beta blockers and some of my other books 
uh, before I saw what he was doing. And this this really is uh, this is becoming kind of my traps series, where I'm going to use this three back adjustable blocker sniffer is kind of a trap blocker. Uh, and you've got some place here and it, and you can run any series with this i i'm kind of giving you this is a conceptual thing so you can look and see how that was done but you don't have to run just the buck sweep series you can you can run this sniffer uh kind of concept at uh with any of the previous series we've we've shown so far so you've got stuff there and then here is the adjustable sniffer stuff that I've been using a little bit more than the short T where you can adjust any of the backs and you can see the examples, how I would adjust those. And I'm just showing you again, but here's one where we kind of go into, I think this is the Minnesota formation where you're going to adjust the one out. And then you see when I do that I'll, for the snap, I'll actually put like a four so the snapper knows to snap the four and then it's a 25 kind of thing so so you wing so you single wing guys that wanted to have a t concept here is this where you can kind of use this sniff thing uh and then you've got he's moving there and then i'm going to move another back which is the three uh and then i can move all of those backs you see i've got one and three and then a four and a x and then two comes over so with, the, with this adjustable kind of thing, you can really start adjusting a lot of backs very easily with some tags, this dollar sign tag, which means sniffer. So you've got that. And then uh, let's see, last series here, man, I'm getting really further into this, but uh, Beast Toro, I'm introducing this. Here are five series there. Uh, here's how to move in and out of the beast for that. So if you're a big beast guy and wanna add which is this is what I'm really going to start adding. And you can move into gun. I just didn't put the gun stuff in here yet, but you'll see something come out this year on all of this. And then here are some plays from that. And I'll flip down here for you to look at those. Okay. And so, and then you've got your pass plays. So basically all of the run series, you can just put a dash P on. Um, and that's kind of what I've got over there. Uh, and basically make any play action t guys coaches really prefer to run play action versus drop back so i know and that's what my son actually picked out again all these uh sweeps and rollouts uh play action passes so you've got those i really like these hook plays uh this is one of my uh, favorite plays of course that's my favorite son's favorite play that boot again here's another boot uh, this play here works great, uh, actually for older teams. Uh, I really like this, these backs coming out of the backfield, along with this one here, the short T play. That's really good. Uh, this is this here is one of my overall happy plays that I love to run. Uh, if you're running this uh, crack mo fly and you're cracking and running sweeps out of there, and then you turn that guy loose on a fly, uh, he'll be wide open. Got a jet pass here. And then here's some drop back stuff. Uh, and I kind of go out of a slot double split kind of thing. Uh, and so I've got that there and you can see all there. And then here is some, uh, I put a few plays from the Power Wing Beast offense here. Uh, those are in there and uh, passing tree. Why, are the, why do I have so many plays? Why are my names so long kind of stuff? So a couple of drills some blank field things that you can draw up your own place, print those off. And then since you've, uh, here's resources. This is the T resources. These are my overall resources, but did a lot of research here on the T. Here are my other books you can look. And then here's a coupon since you've watched the end. Thanks for getting here. You can get $3 off this book, uh, expires after 25 uses. So if you've made it this far, there is a coupon. And uh, here we're at the end right at about 30 minutes. So uh, again, uh, thanks for watching. Here's that coupon, TVID, dollar sign, three off. Uh, the book is $14.99. It was just released. Thanks for doing the walkthrough. Really appreciate it. Uh, you can find this over at coachparker.org. Links will all be in the descriptions below. 
Uh, if you'd like to talk to me, contact me anytime. Again, remember to play for fun and winning is funner. This is Coach Parker with CoachParker.org. Thanks for joining me today. Ciao, coaches. See you next time.